What's going on YouTube? It's Anthony from CompSize Studio and welcome back to your 46 Java programming tutorial. So today I'm actually going to be teaching you guys a little bit more on try catch blocks as I promised because I know it's uh, the syntax is kind of weird and it's kind of tricky to get the first time. So I decided maybe I should just make a second tutorial for you guys so you guys can still so you guys can understand it a little more. Um, so it's going to be pretty much the same um, kind of program that we did in the last tutorial. It's just I'm going to be actually doing um, a calculation that calculates area instead of just dividing it by 10 or something like that. I think that's what I did in the last tutorial. But uh, yeah, so in this tutorial we're just going to be calculating the area of a rectangle. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do inside our main statement, just create a scanner object. So scanner sc is equal to new scanner system dot in semicolon goes outside the brackets Anthony and um, next thing we want to do is add the import java dot util dot scanner and I was just thinking maybe I should do a little tutorial on packages so you guys can understand why um, we use this kind of naming convention for our packages um, so I'm gonna do a quick little tutorial It'll be really easy for you guys I'll do that in the next tutorial on uh, packages so after we got our scanner object, let's start making our try catch block. So if you guys remember from the last tutorial, the first part of the try catch block is the try block. So to do that, we just use the keyword try, and then we put down our two semicolon or not semicolons, curly braces, sorry. And uh, inside of this try block is the code that we want to execute that we think an error might occur in. So basically, in here, I'm just gonna put my whole program in here, and if anything goes wrong it's gonna catch that in our catch block and it's gonna spit out a little error message to the user saying that you're dumb or something for entering a word instead of a number so yeah let's just print something out right now so s out please <clears throat> enter the length <coughs> sorry so next thing we got we gotta do is we're gonna make a variable to store that length so I'm gonna use a float because you might have a rectangle with um, decimal places that's pretty likely especially if you're measuring in like centimeters or something you might have like 5.3 centimeters or something like that and you're gonna to wanna to have accuracy so we're gonna use a float variable and all that does is it stores a decimal place so float length is equal to sc dot next int or not next float, sorry, not next int. Um, since the variable is float, you have to use next float. Kind of self-explanatory. And then that with a semicolon. And then print out again. Please enter the width. And then make another variable for the width, float width. And we're gonna store that as sc dot next float once again. So the next thing we gotta do is we just gotta make the little calculation. And to do that, we're just gonna put in a simple print statement and print it out to the user. So again, s out. The area is. And then we use our plus sign to concatenate uh, the string to the answer of the area. So plus um, length times width space that over <clears throat> and uh, so the next thing uh, now that we have our try block all finished up we just need to catch any errors that might occur in our try block so the next thing we have to do if you guys remember we have to use our catch keyword and then we put down a set of brackets and then inside of here we use a class called exception now exception basically handles any errors that occur within uh, your program it's a built-in class and I'm going to be actually teaching you guys in the advanced tutorials how to make your own exceptions in Java so you can make your own custom um, exceptions. It's it's kind of useful, it's kind of nice if you're making a big program and you want to have your own set of exceptions that may occur in your program. It's kind of nice to have to be able to customize them to your preferences. So I'm going to be teaching you guys that a little later. So first thing, exception. E and then put down your brackets and as you can see all our errors are completely gone and uh, I think I should space this down so you guys can see it there we go 
Um, so inside our catch block, uh, we could actually access methods from this object that we created up here to get details about the error that occurred in our program. So first off, I'm going to make my own little error message. Error has occurred. You messed up. Okay, so that's my own little message. <clears throat> and um, next thing you could do is you could print out the message that the exception class has in its memory. And by doing this, you could just go e dot get message. And uh, a lot of the times, the message that is stored within this method is not useful at all. Usually it's null. In this case, I'm thinking it'll probably be null too. Um, but when you're use, it depends on what your error is. Sometimes it prints out null, which means it doesn't know what it is. And sometimes it prints out an actual useful message that will help you find the problem. But I have a feeling right now it's going to be kind of useless. But anyways, it kind of helps you understand what the exception E actually does. Uh, so you guys can't see that. There we go. Please enter the length. Well, the length can be 10 and the width can be 5.1. So the area of the, um, of the rectangle is 51.0, which is probably rounded, but who cares? Um, rerun this. And what if we have some weirdo that comes over and says, Anthony is the length. Um, as you can see, it says error has occurred, you messed up. And the message, as I said before, the message is null. Um, sometimes that message is actually useful, but in this case, it's actually not. So just ignore that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I did for this, for all I have for this tutorial. Uh, it's not much more different than our last tutorial. I just want to kind of explain it because I didn't feel like I really explained it as well in the last tutorial. So I hope you guys understand it now. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to message me. Um, make sure you check out my website, compsystudio.com, and comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.